Let's get reaction to the latest developments from South Carolina Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy, who was chairman of the House Select Committee on Benghazi that led to the revelation of Hillary Clinton's private email server. He's in Greenville, South Carolina tonight. Congressman, thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I want to start with this uh, quote from the Washington Post talking about Uma Abedin and what she has told friends. It says, quote, top Hillary Clinton aide Uma Abedin has told people she is unsure how her emails could have ended up on a device she viewed as her husband's computer, the seizure of which has reignited the Clinton email investigation, according to a person familiar with the investigation and civil litigation over the matter. We're talking, according to the Wall Street Journal and others, some 650,000 emails. Congressman. Yeah, I mean, if she doesn't know how they got on the computer, there aren't that many ways it can happen. Uma, you could have used a computer, somebody could have forwarded it to your email account. I, I, I don't think that's what the Bureau is investigating, how they got there. I think the Bureau is investigating the nature of the emails. And, and Uma had a chance to turn over all of her devices when she was supposed to, and she chose not to do so. So, uh, so here we are. Now, what do you think about this? Here's John Podesta today in one of the Sunday shows talking about this whole thing. It was long on innuendo, short on facts. So we're calling on Mr. Comey to come forward and explain what's at issue here. Uh, you know, so far there's no charge of wrongdoing. There's no charge even that Hillary uh, and the reporting that backs it up coming from anonymous law enforcement sources uh, indicates it may not be about her server. It may not be about her at all. Congressman? Yeah, that's an old trick, Brad. I mean, blame the cops. Uh, if, if you're being investigated, blame the cops. Uh, Jim Comey's not responsible for a single one of the facts at hand. He didn't tell her to use a private server. He didn't tell Uma not to turn over all of her devices. And God knows he didn't tell Anthony Weiner to send sexually explicit texts to allegedly underage people. So Comey's not responsible for any of this. The timing is, is a direct and natural consequence of decisions that Hillary Clinton made. So I get that Podesta is upset. Brett, remember, he didn't even know about the email situation, and then he thought it had been taken care of by Cheryl Mills and Patrick Kennedy. So I get that he's frustrated. He's just frustrated at the wrong person. Now, do you believe that he, Comey, would have gone forward with this having no inkling of what's inside that computer? Um, I do think he has an inkling what is inside that computer, but he's in a really difficult spot. Unusual tough facts make for, for tough conclusions. Um, and he's darned if he does and darned if he does. And I mean, keep in mind, Brett, let's assume tomorrow morning Hillary Clinton went before a rally and said, the FBI has investigated me. I've been cleared. That's all in the rearview mirror. Well, Comey knows that that is not true. So, so if his obligation is to the public, why would he not let us know? Investigations are never over unless there's a verdict or statute of limitations expires. So if he had not told us that they had re, uh, reopened the investigation, uh, then he, he may be in trouble with Congress, but he certainly would be in trouble with the public. They have a right to know, just like they have a right to know if I get stopped for speeding on the way home tonight, which may happen with the Dallas game coming on, or if <laughs> another member of Congress is charged in the next week. This notion that, that an election tolls the criminal justice system is laughable. I, I've never heard that before. Tonight we're hearing that some former prosecutors may put out a letter about uh, Jim Comey's actions, and here is Harry Reid's letter tonight to Jim Comey. Your actions in recent months have demonstrated a disturbing double standard for the treatment of sensitive information and what appears to be a clear intent to aid one political party over the other. I'm writing to inform you that my office has determined that these actions may violate the Hatch Act, which bars FBI officials from using their official authority to influence an election. Through your party Partisan actions. This is Harry Reid. You may have broken the law. The double standard established by your actions is clear. Your reaction, Congressman? Well, thank God he's leaving uh, is my initial reaction. My second reaction is I did not know Mormons use drugs, and anyone who is capable of sending out that press release has to be under the influence of something. The person responsible for this fact pattern is Secretary Clinton. Uh, Jim Comey did not tell her to use a private server. Uh, he did not say 
mislead the public about whether or not you turn over all your work emails. He certainly didn't say, hey, Secretary Clinton, why don't you say there, you neither sent nor received classified information? So, uh, look, uh, Senator Reid is a political hack. Uh, Jim Comey is a law enforcement officer. Uh, he's not a Republican or a Democrat. I've had my differences with him in the past, but, but he's not a political hack like Senator Reid is. What do you think happens here? Um, I think that the FBI is going to run this out just like they would, I hope, if it were Hillary Smith or Hillary Jones, um, and they're not going to be on a compressed time schedule, Brett. I, I, I mean, I, I get that there's an election coming up in a week, but there's a republic that I would like to see last a little longer than that, and we have to have confidence in the FBI and the Department of Justice. Keep in mind, Brett. It was not Jim Comey who met on the tarmac with the spouse of the target of the investigation. And it was President Obama who prejudged the outcome of this investigation while the investigation was ongoing. So if Harry Reid wants to write a letter to somebody, tell him to write Loretta Lynch and President Obama. Is there anything preventing Hillary Clinton from reaching out to Uma Abedin and saying, you know what, just put out all these emails? Oh, no, no, she, nothing in the world, nothing to have prevented her last week from, from returning them to the State Department. She, she is welcome tomorrow morning to have a press conference with Uma Abedin, and they can invite Anthony Weiner, too, if they want to, and say, this is what is in all of those emails that are on our computer that we failed to turn over to the State Department and the FBI when we were supposed to. Nothing stopping her from doing that. Congressman Gowdy, as always, thank you. Yes, sir. Brett, thank you. Enjoy the game. Let's find out what the candidates are saying. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Jennifer Griffin's in South Florida with the Clinton campaign. And chief political correspondent Carl Cameron reports live from Greeley, Colorado, where a Trump rally was held just a short time ago. Good evening, Carl. Hi, Brett. Down to double digits, just nine days till the election. Donald Trump seems to be hitting his stride, and this race is tightening. Donald Trump is charging hard on the trail and rising in the polls. This could be the mother load. They have 650,000 that they found, it was just reported. I would think they have some real bad ones, but we're going to find out. No doubt in the next nine days, Hillary and her special interests will say and do something to detract. Several new polls indicate toss-ups in the battleground states. A New York Times Siena poll in Florida shows Trump ahead 46-42. Clinton leads Pennsylvania 48 to 40. In North Carolina, it's a virtual tie with Clinton at 48 and Trump at 45. Likewise in Colorado, Clinton 42, Trump 39. In Arizona, it's Trump ahead 44 to 42. All these in the latest CBS News tracking poll, which says 71% say FBI Director Jim Comey's statement does not change their mind about who to vote for. The Washington Post ABC News national tracking poll shows Hillary Clinton barely edging Trump 46 to 45. The FBI's investigation of top Clinton aide Huma Abedin's shared laptop with her estranged husband for allegedly sexting with a minor is becoming a Halloween nightmare for the Clinton campaign and Team Trump smells blood. Hillary set up an illegal server for the obvious purpose of shielding her criminal conduct from public disclosure and exposure. She set up this illegal server knowing full well that her actions put our national security at risk. I have a feeling they've just found a lot of them, don't you think? We never thought we were going to say thank you to Anthony Weiner. Running mate Mike Pence did the Sunday talk shows. We commend uh, the director of the FBI and the FBI for following through on their work before the Congress that if there was new pertinent information uh, sufficient to reopen this investigation that they would inform Congress of that fact and they would move forward. Latinos for Trump, I love that. Give me that sign. From Mexico. You have to come into this country legally. We are going to do so well with the Latinos. Obviously, nine days is single digits. Trump's been keeping an absolutely exhausting schedule. He's not done for the night. From here, he goes to Albuquerque, New Mexico for another rally, 8 o'clock local time, 10 o'clock Eastern. It's going to be like this right to the end, Brad. You would have heard from Trump about that double-digit thing if you didn't come back to that. Carl, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm sure I will. <laughs> While her aides attacked the FBI decision to link newly discovered emails with her own email scandal, Hillary Clinton refused to talk directly about the issue today in public. But it was there, if you read between the lines. Fox News correspondent Jennifer Griffin is in Miami tonight. Good evening, Jennifer. 
Good evening, Brett. Well, with nine days to go, the Clinton campaign put out a video response from her campaign manager calling the FBI investigation overblown and calling on voters to push back by going to the polls. Hillary Clinton avoided talking about the FBI director at campaign stops in Florida and tried to look forward. No matter what is thrown at us, we need to stay focused on our goal. We need to understand that the best way to repudiate a negative, hateful, bigoted vision is by voting. Clinton stopped at a soul food restaurant in Fort Lauderdale, leaving the response to the FBI director's letter to Congress to her surrogates. We are calling on the FBI. Look, now that you've thrown this kind of question mark letter out and already had to backtrack, you ought to put all the details out for the American public to see instead of doing this kind of, you know, big question mark right before the election. Clinton's campaign manager, Robbie Mook, was on the ropes this morning with Fox's Chris Wallace trying to answer questions about her longtime aide, Huma Abedin's email practices. Why on earth wouldn't Hillary Clinton say to the, her closest personal aide, do you, was there any stuff on that e, uh, on your laptop and what's it was it? Chris, again, I appreciate your question because people want answers. There's nothing about Huma Abedin in the letter that I, was sent I know sent that, out. but why wouldn't Clinton ask her? Well, why wouldn't Clinton ask anybody? They could be emails from anybody in the world. But I mean, there, we, there are no we, reports we that it's anybody know. else except Huma Abedin. I, I, again, you're, you're putting out some hypotheticals. There are other hypotheticals that have been put out there. Huma Abedin, whose laptop appears to be at the center of the FBI investigation, for her part, has been mum. She was in Brooklyn yesterday at Clinton headquarters, not traveling with Clinton as she usually does. You talk to her. Have you asked? Have you asked Huma Abedin what is on that computer and why she didn't turn it over uh, when she <laughs> said she had divided all the devices? We don't know what computer Mr. Comey is talking about. You're assuming a lot of facts that we don't know. So I think that, uh, as I said, she's been fully cooperative uh, with the authorities. And now another embarrassing email from WikiLeaks seems to suggest campaign manager Robbie Mook was lying recently when he told CNN that the campaign had no relationship with Bob Kramer, one of the Democratic operatives who appeared in that Project Veritas video talking about sending provocateurs to Trump rallies. But a new email released by WikiLeaks uh, shows that his partner, Bob Kramer's partner, Michael Lux, talking to a Clinton insider saying that uh, Kramer is, quote, close to Robbie Mook, unquote. Brett? Okay, Jen, thank you. Here's a look at some of the international headlines now.